Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have Jenna joining me who is another amazing out school teacher. I actually have interviewed her in the past sometime last year and in that interview we chatted all about how she was able to build a good successful out school business through market research and funnels. So highly recommend you check out that video if you haven't seen it already. But today we're going to chat about how Jenna has been able to build a sustainable online business throughout school and beyond. All right. So first, let's go ahead and have you introduce yourself. Maybe you can share a little bit about your transition to teaching online and building a successful online business. Wonderful. Well, I'm Jenna Lee, and I'm also here on YouTube. Um, and I started teaching online a couple years back, probably a little bit over two years ago. And um, I've been sort of settling into out school for a while now. I've been teaching on out school for two years. And um, I it took me about six months to go full time on out school, which was um, something I worked hard for. And it was Basically, at that point, I was working about 15 to 20 hours a week um, and earning more than I did in the classroom, which was pretty cool. So I was a classroom teacher for three years. So it's kind of crazy to think that um, I've been teaching online almost three years, like two and a half years. So it's going to be like equal soon, which is crazy. Um, and just recently in the past year, like last fall, I started um, kind of feeling a little bit tired of just the monotony of teaching online every single day. And I wanted to be able to support like classroom teachers who are feeling like in the same place that I was and um, kind of help them in whatever way that I can to be able to sort of live more freely, start teaching online. Um, and so in just in the last year, I've um, started another income stream, um, actually a couple other income streams and experimented with some things. And now I own a membership, uh, which is kind of my my part two of my job right now that I'm still scaling and growing. All right. Thanks for sharing. So let's go ahead first and chat a little bit about out school. I feel like lately I've been getting asked a lot if if I still think out school is worth it. Is it oversaturated? What are kind of your thoughts? Do you think new out school teachers can still find success today? Uh, the short answer is yes. Um, but the best, I think the best thing right now about sort of my uh, perspective of this question is because I do now work with a lot of new online teachers and see where they're having success and how long it's taking them to have that success. Um, you can still have success on out school. I had a teacher in the membership who started um, in April building up her class like she had just gotten hired on out school. And so that was April of this when the membership opened, right? April 2022. Um, from then until July of this year. So how many months is that? Uh, three, three, four months about. Um, she's at 10 hours a week consistently. Um, and I wouldn't say her subject is necessarily like extreme popular either. So I would say that's the that's a good average to go by. So while maybe in July of 2020, it took less time to sort of get booked, maybe, you know, every one, like about one to two months to get a fully booked schedule. It will take longer now, um, but it's still not like too long. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's worth it to spend um, three, four, five, six months building up the business um, that could, you know, replace your teaching income or replace whatever you're currently um, making right now, and also sort of having that freedom of schedule control and things like that. So I will say it is it does take a lengthier time I've noticed to build that business up, but it's still not oversaturated to the point that um you can't still uh be successful and i have other stories like that too so um just from what i'm seeing it is still just realistically you can still make a great business out of out school yeah i've, I've heard similar things as well it's taking some people a little bit longer maybe to find a little bit of success but it's still right. possible and it does take a little bit more effort i've noticed as well 
a lot of teachers in 2020. It was kind of like a, you could post almost any class at that point and it was really getting booked where now you have to put just a little more work, which is not always a bad thing. It kind of sets you right up for success. Um, so yeah. since you basically agree that out school is still possible to make a good income without school, do you have any tips for those that are just getting started today? They're just starting without school. What is like one or two tips you would give them? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think the first step is that it doesn't have to be perfect. I know that this is sort of something cheesy to say, but actually about 90% of the teachers that I have have reached out to me, uh, it's like they won't they won't get started the first you know two months of thinking about it and um that sometimes you know they walk away sometimes they they are like oh i'm back i'm gonna do it but i think that the longer i mean the longer you wait is gonna be the longer until you see that progress because at the end of the day it still is gonna take time to build that business but the sooner that you start the sooner that that those goals are gonna be reached and it could always take you a shorter time um so i think you know, there's a lot to learn, but you don't have to have everything perfect to get started with. Um, I think that's the biggest barrier that's that's holding some of the uh, like teachers back from applying to out school, just even applying to out school. So um, just try to get, you know, try to learn, you know, one to two new things a month and just try to keep taking steps forward. And then the other thing that I would say as far as the the market right now and um like like what alejandro was saying is it does take a little bit more work and i think the work is really in um finding the students that are going to really align with you and uh, as a teacher and showing them who you are and like kind of standing out and branding yourself and i think a lot of the parents um, want to see what type of teacher you are and if you are um, like a good fit for their their kids and sort of if you're offering a class that they want. So just doing a little bit more work on your class listings and making sure it's really clean, making sure it's really set up well um, so that it's showcasing who you are as a teacher and also it's showing the parents who you teach. Um, so for instance, if you teach you know, young kids make that make sure that that's showcased in your class listing. If you teach shy kids how to be confident, even if you're teaching a subject like math, um, showcase that in your in your teaching um, or in your class listing. And I think that that's one of the best ways to stand out and to kind of get more enrollments at a quicker rate than you would if you just kind of put a class up there and and didn't really care about how everything looked. I, I guess take a little bit more time and care in your class listing. Yeah, oh, that's a good tip, good tip. And I would even say to add like a little tip further um, is to care once you actually get your enrollments. Yes, true. <laughs> really, really focus in because lately I my tutoring, because I tutor a lot in out school, yeah. my tutoring has gone up and I probably would say during the last week or so, I've had like three or four new students yeah, and I learned from those parents. They were literally testing different tutors to see yeah. which one would match, which I thought was really That's interesting. Really interesting. It, matches, it matches exactly what you said. People will look at that profile. And then even the step further, when you're actually teaching the class, they do look at how you handle different situations in the class, your personality, your teaching style. So just making all of that very clear, um, mm -hmm. I think really helps you when you start. Yeah. And something, one more thing about that, <laughs> we're kind of bouncing off each other, but is that, you know, you, yeah, when you're making sure that your class listing is actually how you are as a teacher, because if you're saying on your class listing that you are energetic and you're kind of copying what you think is something that a parent's going to want, but then they show up to your class and you're not anything like that, then like, like in Alejandra's case, that parent would go on to the next tutor because they were looking for someone who is that way. And different students want different natures of teachers. So it's just important to um, showcase who you really are as a teacher so that when they show up, like you're gonna get great reviews, you're gonna get great feedback. Um, and yeah, and then you'll get re more retention. So you get, you'll retain more students. Yes, yes, very good. All right, awesome. 
So I know you've been an out school teacher for a while. Um, and you mentioned that you make full-time income, but you're teaching part-time hours. So what were it kind of some steps you took in order to accomplish that? Uh, well, I definitely started uh, by, I would say, working more and in the sense that I was sort of lesson planning more and um, at the beginning sort of setting my classes up for success. Um, I guess at, at the beginning, I mean, I won't go through it all, but I did sort of try some different and experiment with some different topics that were sort of related to each other in a way. Like I taught some elementary music type escape room classes. Um, I taught sign language with music. So everything was sort of related to music, but it wasn't the same type of class. And what I was doing there was kind of seeing one, what, you know, what do I enjoy teaching? Um, two, what do the students like want from me and a lot of them the funny thing is that i figured out that's not something that they wanted specifically from me um as a teacher so you kind of test some things and see what's working see what's not um and so i i did a lot of that testing like i was just in a call with uh one of my members who's building up his out school business he's it's pretty consistent right now but he wants to scale his income and I was talking about how I started with violin and I was, you know, making a decent amount of income, but I wanted to scale that. And so I added a branch, another branch, and I added voice. Um, so I think that that was important to scale my business. So at first I tested out different things. I saw that violin was working. So I went and focused on violin. I built up the classes. Um, with violin. And then when I saw that I needed to scale my income, I added um, another branch of music. And you might not always have to add maybe another topic, but it's really important to sort of build a class. I, I guess you hear the word class suite, um, but I personally call it a success, sort of a success path or path to success where you're building like classes upon each other. So let's say you start with a a course like a, a level one course and then you go to a level two course and each of these are like eight weeks long and then where are the students going to go after that with you. Um, so you maybe do an ongoing club or whatnot so building a success path for um, your students and for that topic and in your success path are actually different classes and sometimes even different class types so i know that was a lot but just <laughs> it, it is a lot like <laughs> shouldn't go so much in depth but you know having different class types that and different types of classes like i know alejandra you do tutoring so just sort of diversifying in that way is actually going to allow you to scale but i was just thinking back this morning on that and it is sometimes helpful to like, let's say that you're teaching math and you're specifically teaching multiplication. If you feel like you're doing really good and consistent with that, but it's just not enough income for you right now, think about maybe teaching another concept of math. You know what I'm saying? And that could really expand and scale your income. And I think that's what helped me to go full time, like not full time because I was already full time, but to scale my income to be over what I was making in the classroom um, consistently. Yeah, very good. No, that's a perfect tip. Very long, but it makes sense. <laughs> and it, it's, it's the best way to, if you want to make, like you said, more income, you can't just offer one type of class or yeah. one camp. You do have to have a few others um, if you want to try to scale. Right. So, nice, nice. Okay, so good, good tips. Now, I know we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but when did you decide that you wanted to take your business kind of a step further and build another stream of income? I think the biggest word for me in this whole thing, ever since I um, like transitioned out of the classroom sort of abruptly <laughs> is what can I do? Um, how can I make this business sustainable for me um, and long-term? Because at the end of the day, this is this is actually what I I really enjoy doing. This is what I want to do. I really enjoy being, you know, not having to uh, 
follow the rules so much or not having to follow a specific schedule and things like that. So for me, it's always been, how do I make this sustainable? Like, how do I afford my benefits? How do I afford all these things? And then also make this career something that I can do when I'm 50, you know, how can I do this? And I know that it's going to sort of change and I'm going to pivot in different directions. Um, but I, for me, for me, and what I was seeing from other online teachers and learning from other online teachers was that it's important to kind of build a business outside of working for a company. And I think that working for a company and platform is a great start, but let's say that you want to continue teaching classes. Um, like you still want to teach online classes every single day. You can still do that, but think about scaling it into a, a business outside of a company where you're tutoring um, students outside of an online company and you're able to like kind of be have more control in that way of who comes into your classes and um, you have more control over the marketing of your classes and all these things. So I guess that's what made me sort of look past just working for a company is, um, you know, companies aren't always stable. And this isn't to like make you scared of, oh, should I work on out school? Because I think out school is a great, great way to get started and even like to do in, in even to continue to doing in a few years. I'm going to continue teaching on out school until I can't anymore, you know. Um, but I think we've we've seen in the online teaching world that even there was a huge like breakdown of Chinese companies, which maybe you don't know, but um, you know, we've seen that there are platforms that kind of come and go and sort of change rules and regulations. Um, so kind of taking things into your own hands and going outside of the business is going to be much more sustainable in the long term for you and also help you to scale even further than you could on a platform. Yeah. No, financially that's no that's a lot of good info and it's great if that's your goal because I know you mentioned when you left the classroom and you said you've mentioned before that you kind of left abruptly but you wanted to make online teaching like your full-time job and you wanted it to be for a while so right. I'm assuming you don't want to go back to the classroom so that's why you've been working yeah. towards building something that you can see yourself doing 5, 10, 15, 20 down, right. 20 years down the road. So, yeah. And I know that's not like everyone's goal. Um, but specifically in my case, that was just my goal is how can I, for myself, just make this sustainable and, and my family, you know, right. mm -hmm. did you have any hurdles maybe along the way trying to transition from just teaching online? Well, I don't want to say just, but teaching online to then building your membership or doing something? Were there any hurdles in between? I mean, I still have hurdles. <laughs> um, I would say it is it is definitely more challenging um, than my experience teaching online for companies. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm still, I'm still, I still haven't necessarily reached all my goals in that. I mean, I'm always, I always have new, new goals, um, but I think one of the hurdles that I mentioned before is I created a course at first and I realized, um, you know, I was getting success in that my clients were getting success, but I realized also that a lot of um, the there was a few teachers in that course that needed more support and accountability. And um, so I guess I would say that in some sense, that was a failure you know there was a there was something that was missing in that course but instead of saying oh i fail like i'm just going to get rid of this course and just continue you know with my regular things um because that's you know making me money anyway i i decided you know how can i change this around to make it more supportive for teachers and um you when you go outside of a company like that and you start to build your own business you really have to think of um 
the marketing side of things and the customers and like how to serve them most and you really have to have a good idea and i still struggle i still struggle with that like i just this morning i sent my email less an email like i need help like can you send me what you're struggling with because lately i've kind of had this pause like with content that i just feel like not truly aligned with my content right now so I'm trying to figure out like how I can best support the community and it's not always what you think that they need. So for my course, it wasn't exactly exactly what uh, like my community needed from me and I realized that and so um, that was, I guess, one of the bigger things lately that's happened. Um, so. I'm expecting that things like that are going to happen in the future too, but I'm kind of used to the pivoting sort of direction. So, um, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, but that's sort of that's so good though, because you still you're still learning as you go. Um, you don't yeah. have to be extra hard on yourself, but that's awesome. That's awesome that you were able to kind of overcome it and you realize, okay, my course is good, but something's kind of missing there. There right something I can do to just help my community better um help my community better so yes for sure and there's no one else the one of the things too is there's no one else to blame but yourself when it comes to building your own business but then you also have to be like forgiving of yourself um because it's just like out school like just like starting on out school you're you're not going to know everything at first um yeah so and I'm also just learning to kind of invest in that side of my business because I um, have not really had to invest a whole lot much before. Um, but it is when I do invest, I end up kind of going leaps ahead instead of sort of like the mini steps. So I've been learning to just sort of like plan that in is like invest in my business. I think that's a big thing too um, that I'm working on. Oh, good. Nice. <laughs> That's a good one. I know right now I'm trying to work on getting out of my comfort zone sometimes. Mm. I'm so used to just doing what you like. Sometimes you need that little push. Yeah. But that's good. That's good. Nice, nice insight. Um, so what then, because you've been using the word sustainable, I feel like so much. And our, <laughs> we try to make our businesses very sustainable. Do you have like one or two tips for those that want to build a sustainable online business? uh yeah i mean i think i think the the biggest goal with that is if you're starting and you're trying to build a sustainable business i think focus on focus on one thing at a time and build it up so if you're if your focus right now is um building up your online classes then focus on that give that give that time let it build um let it start to like make you money. Um, if I hadn't started that before I went straight into the membership, um, I won't have this cushion and this time and this extra time to work on my other business. So if, if that's your goal, like work on that right now. Um, and then as far as increasing your sustainability, which I kind of mentioned before is to think about, um, building another income stream. And lately I've been tossing up with myself, like how many income streams do you really need? Um, because I don't think you like at first need to have like five income streams, just boom, 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 boom. My main two right now are out school and my membership. And I'm okay with that because I'm working on building them up. Um, and so take, be patient with yourself because you know, most of this stuff, it can take, it take, it can take like several years. Um, if you kind of learn and listen to some of the top entrepreneurs that are making millions of dollars, I mean, it took, it took them five, 10 years to get there. Um, and, you know, even so, you know, you might not be making a million dollars even then. So just, just take the time to build some, your first income stream up and then just, add one that you have feel a lot of passion for um because even though you want it to be sustainable financially you also want to feel like it's going to be sustainable on a personal level for you if you don't go with something that you're passionate about it's not going to be sustainable for you as well so if your passion is for building teacher resources on teachers pay teachers then choose that 
my passion isn't in that. So I didn't choose that. You know what I'm saying? So um, focus odd enough. My answer for that is focus on one income stream at a time. <laughs> Oh, that's that's perfect actually. this is where i'm at right now okay and don't have i was having a conversation with someone else earlier this week like not having that squirrel brain which we're all, all probably do once in a while where something looks really shiny and you want to try something new don't do that focus yeah. on one thing master that and do it really well just really mm -hmm. really try to focus so right oh, perfect 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 tip so I guess technically you only have two streams of income. Well, you probably have smaller yeah. streams of income as well. But my next question, what I had planned on asking was, what is maybe your favorite stream of income you've been working on currently? Okay. Um, so what what happened actually with that, and I'll and I'll let you know, is I I do have other streams of income. However, these are at the moment, I've kind of shifted away from focusing on all of them at once and now my favorite income stream is of course the membership <laughs> um because what i've seen about the membership is like a lot of people are scared to open a membership or some type of subscription service um but what i've seen about it is there's a lot of passive passivity in a membership um it is one of the harder things to get started and keep going but the reality is that for me, like I, I check in with my like Facebook community, which is pretty easy, like five, 10 minutes a day. Um, but then we meet once a month for group coaching and we, I mean, we don't meet every day, but I'm able to scale my income and soon I'll be able to be making like a thousand dollars with that by just meeting, you know, once, once a month. Um, and you know, and you can decide on how how often you can meet. So anyway, there's a lot of passive passive income in that, right? Um, so that's what I'm choosing to focus on right now. I have done coaching in the past. I have, I've done. Um, I still do. I do actually quite a bit of uh, affiliate marketing, but just for like the online space, just for teachers that I believe in and that can really um, offer their community something really really and my community something uh, that will really support them. So I do that and I do referring still, um, but really my, I just lately, I've just been tossing up back and forth, like what should I focus on? And I really just decided to sort of back away from everything and go in with the membership um, and out school, of course, but I feel like for out school, I've been doing it so long that I don't have to spend as much time thinking about that and building it up. Okay, nice. Very, yeah. very nice. All right. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I feel like you shared so many different, so many different tips and strategies and ideas in our conversation together. Um, so we'll kind of start to conclude it. I was thinking maybe we can conclude by you sharing your top three tips for teachers that specifically want to transition to either teaching online full time and then kind of eventually creating that sustainable online business. Sure. Uh, so first, I mean, first, first tip is to not let the fear of not knowing everything uh, keep you from following your dreams, keep you from reaching that goal. Um, and this can be wherever you're at in your business. If you're, if you like are going to transition to teach online, I think that's kind of who I'm talking to right now, um, but even at the later stages. So uh, don't let that hold you back because the reality is that even even me and even Alejandra, like we still have times even now. And I know that Alejandra, you've been teaching for a lot longer than me online, but where we do feel like we're sort of failing or we don't know everything about our business. So it's not new. It's not like you're you're the only person experiencing that uh, when you're about to transition out of teaching online. So you have to get used to that uncomfortable feeling. Um, so don't let that hold you back at first because you're just gonna get more comfortable with feeling that way as you go. Um, my second tip is you don't have to do everything at once. Uh, like you don't have to quit tomorrow um, from the classroom and you also don't have to um, go super quick with your business if you don't have 
uh, the capacity to do that, um, you can take it at your own pace and just do the best that you can do and just find some time um, during the week, each each day during the week to do something. And that could be 30 minutes of work each week, but try to find that consistency um, and take it at your own pace. So some teachers are gonna want to like spend one, two hours a day, but if that's not something that you can do and maybe you have kids, maybe you have a family to care for, then take it you know, 30 minutes at a time and choose a time that works best for you either in the morning or evening or whenever you have the time. Um, and yeah, I guess my third tip for that is to find a community. Um, you can find a community uh, on Instagram, we have a great community on Instagram for online teachers. I've had online teachers reach out to me and I'm happy to share what they can do next and um, where some other resources are. Like I've gotten teachers that have reached out to me, maybe want to apply to Elt School as an organization. And I know that Katie Geddes is really great with that. So I actually help um, kind of direct new online teachers in the spot that's best for them. Um, and then also someone reached out to me about an organize like working for an organization and I got her working with an organization and now she's working full time with that organization. So that was pretty cool. Um, but anyway, point is that like you can definitely get in get in touch with the community. I do think the strongest one is Instagram for now. What do you think about that, Alejandra? I don't know. I think so too. Yeah. And then um yeah, and then I guess the community, you'll see other teachers who are successful with it, but you'll also see teachers who are just starting out. And so you'll be able to like see that you can be successful too and be a little bit more inspired and motivated by that. For sure. Yeah, I always recommend that community. I feel like it's such a big piece to keep you motivated, but then there's so many people out there that can help you learn and grow. So. Yeah. Such, such sure. value. All right. Well, thank you, Jenna, for of sharing. Course. I enjoyed <laughs> our conversation again. Um, and we'll have to chat again soon. Yes, let's do it. Thank you again, Jenna, for sharing all that value and tips with us today. Remember, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos and future interviews. As I mentioned in the beginning, I also have another interview with Jenna that you may find very, very helpful if you are just starting without school. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in a future video.